I'm pleased to welcome Gordon Lightfoot and Ronnie Hawkins to Studio Q. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Uh, Ronnie, I'll start with you. It was 2002, the last time uh, you put out some music. How does it feel to be uh, back in the studio? Well, it was wonderful. When, when I found out that Gordon could come in, it made it a whole new ball game when Gordon shows up. <laughs> How so? <laughs> well... All the women come around then. <laughs> well, <laughs> you had a hand in getting uh, Ronnie back into the studio, Gordon. Uh, how was the experience for you? Well, uh, we were. Uh, we decided to uh, to go out to hear the Good Brothers uh, at the Havelock Festival this summer, and Ronnie mentioned to me that uh, still after forty years that he was determined to uh, to do a recording of Pony Man and. I said, well, if, you, if you're going to do that, I said, I'd, I'd like to be there. <laughs> and uh, so they said, that's fine. You'll, uh, you'll be the producer. And I said, okay. I said, that's, that's, that's very good. Uh, I, never, I produced uh, uh, lots of band tracks in my days. I should mm-hmm. be able to do this. And uh, at the same time was another song, Hovering, uh, a song by, by Robbie Robertson called... Uh, the, the, yeah, the Christmas uh, the, the, Christmas must be tonight. The, the, the Christmas. That's not. What what title did we did we did we settle on? I the, can't remember. Or I know we settled on something. Oh, we're but, calling it uh, must be Christmas. Must be Christmas. I guess. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, deciding uh, uh, what what. We use my band, or, or would we use a group of uh, musicians that Ronnie had uh, had run into up in uh, in Peterborough? And you know that Ronnie has uh, has introduced more bands to the music business than anyone I ever heard of. <laughs> and he said, "Well, I've got my little band, and, and and up here, if you want to try it with them, or you can try it with your band." So. Uh, it, it became a thing about well, whose band are we going to to use? <laughs> right, nope. that was the first the first thing that came up. You want to add to that? And little, what did you decide on? Timer. Well, once I knew Gordon was going to come up and get, you know, he and David Foster's got ears on them like nobody else in the world. They can hear things that nobody else hears. <laughs> well, in in any case, that that that's the way. One thing led to and another. It was great. And, it was great for me because I've always. I've always loved Gordon Lightfoot's music for many, many, many years, you know. Stories. He tells the greatest stories on the planet, man, great ones. And I said, well, the Pony Man just one of my favorites along with about 900 others. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to do the Pony Man with his Christmas song because it's kind of a Christmas-type song. I, I, it's a, like a, a, a bedtime story. The Pony Man is going to come and see if you've been good. You said you love Gordon's storytelling. Oh, he's the best. And you love his ears. Oh, he, he can hear things that nobody else can hear. He, and his music has to be, I mean, perfect, or he ain't happy, I can tell you that. <laughs> when did you, oh when did, do you remember first noticing that about uh, Gordon, his ears? Oh, no, I, I just liked the way he played and, and, and sang. I, I, was going to, I was a Gordon fan before he ever recorded or played or anything. He was playing some of the coffee houses and stuff, you know, friends, restaurants and stuff. And I liked it so much that I, I used to take people over from where I was playing, the Lecoq door, said, there's a cat over here can play that folk music better than anybody. And that was Gordon, of course. Do you, well, remember, do you remember your very first time seeing him play? Yeah, I, I remember while we went in there. Gordon was doing cover songs, and I don't think he'd written any songs by the time. I went in there, and he was doing a song by Marty Robbins called, with a big, big the gun. Big on. iron, the big, big iron. Gun. And he sung the hell out of it, you know, because well, well. he was kind of a Marty fan. Then years later, Marty did one of your songs, didn't he, or two of them? He did. They, yeah. uh, but I, I was going to say that, that Ronnie and I grew up on, on Young Street, really. Uh, I was playing underage down there, but, you know... It, Right back at the beginning, like a lot of the rest of us, uh, but we uh, we got to know each other. I mean, uh, j- j- just through through. All he had to do was walk like a, a block and a half, and he would be at Steele's Tavern, which I think probably was. A, I went to see him. He was, well, he was close enough for me to get there between breaks. Uh, mm. we, we were doing well. He had the the rock show going d- downtown. You know, uh, it, it was it was the big deal. On Young Street was to go to the Lecoq door and and later the uh, the Hawk's Nest, uh, or you know as as years went by because it uh, 
Ron played there for, for quite a long while. What were your first and thoughts of Ronnie? A big pardon? What were your first thoughts of Ronnie? Well, I, I mean, I, I was amazed when he, when, when he walked in because I, uh, uh, I said, why, why would uh, a guy like Ronnie be interested in a, <laughs> you know, in a folk artist? I, I, I want to add uh, 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 one other thing, too. He did, uh, uh, was it three or four of my tunes, too, at that time, and one of them actually made it up to number one on the, on the hit parade here in Canada. It was called... Uh, uh, now, what the heck was Home the title? From the I'm forest. having a terrible time with titles today. <laughs> Home, from, Home the from the Forest. What a song. Mm. And uh, he, he had made a great recording, went up to number one in the hit parade here in Canada. And uh, he was doing it on stage. And I would come in at Le Coq d'Or at, at the time, and he would say, he would stop, and he'd say, my, my, my personal songwriter is, <laughs> has just arrived. <laughs> you know? And, uh, I'll I tell you a story about one of Gordon's songs. <laughs> And the Lecoq d'Or, who I'm playing, you know, we, we do the song. If it's on the hit parade, we try to learn it to keep the people coming in the bar. So he wrote a song a long time ago that I really liked. But I used to dedicate it to all the pregnant girls in the house. And the song was, that's what you get for loving me. That's oh, yeah. what you get for loving me. <laughs> I know. That, uh, that, that was a large one for me by Peter, Paul, and Mary, I, I remember at that time. Gordon, you've called Ronnie your best teacher. What did you mean by that? Uh, it's just that go get him. Go get him, man. Don't stop now, you know. <laughs> the, the big time is around the corner. Just around the corner. You know, it was the same. He, he was like that with all the people that he knew, all his friends and all, all the people that he helped. And he helped a, a, a lot of people. He helped me. He, was, he inspired me. And, uh, and so many other people, he deserves a lot of credit for doing that. You're credited with helping establish so much of an important music scene and, and establishing dozens of important careers in Canadian music. Tell me about uh, what made a guy like Robbie Robertson, for example, that you covered here special when you first noticed him. Well, Robbie was about 15 years old. <clears throat> His mother came into the bar Dolly, we called her, and uh, what a beautiful lady. She fed the band for about two years. But anyway, she said he, she had a son. that he, She was afraid he was going to get in trouble because he's an eighth or ninth grade dropout, Robbie Robertson. He's got a vocabulary now, nine words more than Webster. Boy, he, he's learned a lot in these years. He's, he's come a long way since that reservation, I'll tell you that. He's Mr. Hollywood out there now. But I said, okay, I, you know, I'll give him a lesson just because, you know, she said he, he really wants to come up. I said, I'll, I'll let him rehearse with us for a while. So I hired him, I remember, $50 a week and room and board, and he had to practice our songs and then come to rehearsal and practice other stuff, and he just started getting really, really, really good. And we brought him down to Arkansas and put him on bass the first time, first time around, just because we wanted to have him learn all that string stuff, right? Then he worked his way up, and, and I had three or four of the greatest guitar players. I've been so lucky at getting such great musicians, I just can't hardly believe it. I had two or three of the greatest guitar players on the planet at that time, and Robbie got to study under him. You know, the, my rockabilly man, Jimmy Ray Palman, then Fred Carter. You might not know who Fred Carter is, but he left my band and went back to Nashville and became the highest paid session man in Nashville. And then they gave him his own record company. And then he did all that stuff for Simon and Garfunkel, like mm -hmm. Bridge Over Troubled Water and the, the Boxer. That's, that's him. That's Fred picking that gut string intros and stuff. Wow. And Simon, so he was a hell of a musician. So Robbie got to study under all of them. I mean, I had three or four greats for a while. And he just kept getting better and better and better. Gordon, what, what do you think brought all these great musicians, uh, drew all these great musicians to Ronnie here? What do well, you think it was he, about he, him? He, 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 like I say, it, it was the room and the board. It was the room and the board that, that did it. <laughs> yeah, room and board. It was, <laughs> you know, they, they, were like, they were almost like, like he, he became a, a, a father figure to some of these guys. And, you know, he, he really... I have been so lucky to be able to play but since the very beginning. Jimmy Ray Palman, you won't know who he is, but he was the best rockabilly picker in Memphis. And so he was the one that came up the first time with us. And then we kept Roy Buchanan. Have you ever heard that name? 
He Roy was, Buchanan, yeah. yeah well, he, he was with me. He taught Robbie a lot, too. So Robbie studied on four or five great, great musicians for a while, and he became one of the best. T- tell me a little bit about this scene where you guys met uh, in Toronto here. What was that scene like at, at that time, Gordon? It was sort of, uh, you know, it was uh, the, the 50s, 60s, pre, pre-Beatle stuff that we were hearing, all, all the, the good rock tunes that were out there uh, were, were being covered by the, by the good artists. And uh, it, it, uh, I, re- I remember when, when, when Ronnie's band became the backup band for Bob Dylan, uh, which was uh, when it came time for them to go on the road with Bob Dylan, Ronnie had to just say like, "Bye bye, see see you guys later." And uh, about a year after that, they had their first record, and uh, they got in with Bob Dylan's management, and uh, they just they they took off. Mm. And uh, Robbie was a part of that, so so Ronnie had to just just let them go, and he was very unselfish about that. And I saw him do that many times, where where he would have people who had to move on, and he'd have to have people come in to take their place, and he always was just boom right there. Just, well, to to have people to come in to to get that new band going. What was special about that uh, time, that particular time, and that scene here in Toronto for you? Well, you know, Toronto was just starting to rock, just starting to go. They didn't have many any hardly rock and roll bands or rockabilly bands, and so that was really lucky for us too because it it started getting airplay that that music and it started going over to the people, and we were about the only band in, in, in Canada or in Ontario that was playing that style of music. So it really drew a, a lot of people for a while, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and of course, Robbie then, he, he got really, well, the band, the band got so good. They were getting offers from all kinds of big-time musicians to come with them. That's how, how good they were, you know. And I knew they was going to have to go one of these days because there ain't no way you can make that kind of money in a bar. <laughs> they were offered a lot of money. I said, well, take these jobs, but I'll borrow a little money off of you every now and then. <laughs> well, every, everyone is asking, how come this is the first time the two of you have worked together? I don't, I've wanted to work with him for 40 years, but too many women was chasing him. <laughs> well, that's, that's kind of you to say so, Ron. I, 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 but uh, it, it, it became a necessary thing. When we were uh, at the festival this summer, uh, the, the, he, was, he was getting ready to, to do the Robbie's tune, and he also wanted to do Pony Man, but there was a, a little bit of slack at the other end and getting on with Robbie's tune. So we, I said, well, let's do both, and I want to be there if you're going to do Pony Man because I wanted to do a couple of, of alterations in that tune to make sure that uh, we, we, that it, it wasn't too long. I had to do a little bit of an editing job on it. So I, I want to be there. Uh, while while they were doing it, not so much to produce, but just to to be there, mm-hmm. and and uh, I've I've made about twenty albums myself, so I you know I said well surely we can do we can do this one, and uh, we just went ahead because it seemed like it was being uh, done of necessity, and Ronnie hadn't played for had a record for a while, and and we just said let's make fun of it, and let, let, let's do it, let's have some fun. I said, see, I work for a company named Cambria, Mr. Marty Davis. He's a music lover. The whole family loves music. They're, they're out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and they're, they're big wheels down there. And so he just loved the band. The whole family loved the band. In fact, they have the last waltz party still this day, once or twice a year, you know. And so he was down seeing an old, old buddy of mine, uh, Peter Pockington. <laughs> Peter called me and said, I'm going to run for prime minister. I said, well, I've been here, and Peter, you better run for the border. <laughs> but anyway, Marty said, if you'll record it, he loved that song. And he said, if you'll record it, we'll pay for it, we'll produce it. And I said, I'll try the best I can, you know. And then I told him about Gordon's song, I would like to do it. He said, you can do it, too, you know. Get, I said, we'll get Gordon's permission. I'm going to tell him I'm going to try to do the best I can. I don't think anybody can sing Gordon's songs as good as Gordon. But you know, there's always room for somebody else on there. <laughs> so, so we got talking at the festival. Yeah. 
And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and you know, here you are. We, we yeah. said, let's yeah. do it. Let, let's do this. Well, and, what does it mean to be here yeah. together at this stage in your lives and your careers? What does it mean to be here together? We're, we're having a great wonderful. time working together yeah. to, to have a capacity where we can do something together like, like this. You know? I, it's, told it's Gordon, thrill. I told Gordon, I told Gordon, I wish I could do one Gordon Lightfoot song a year for the next 35 <laughs> years. <laughs> so, he's yeah. got over 200 songs you know so i got a lot to pick from you know is that the plan to do one a year you i think? know i'd like to do that I, I, I will if i'm alive yeah but you know both of us have been skating on july ice now for a while <laughs> well what's what's gotten you through you both had a couple of close calls health wise what's what's gotten you through ronnie all them women praying that we'd get better and come by and see them one more time <laughs> i'm hearing, <laughs> a, you know, hearing the, the women for you too gordon well, I, Every woman in town was after Gordon. He was a hero of heroes. When you're a hero of heroes, you have to, don't have to worry about women. You have to worry about getting them away from you sometimes. <laughs> yeah. We've locked the door to the studio right yeah. now. Yeah. I, I have, I've had a couple of close calls, but I just work it off. I just keep, keep doing exercise and doing that stuff. He does, Gordon does, what, 70 days a year still? Yeah, we still play. I, we still, I still tour. So we're, oh, I still smoke. have my band, and we're still out there doing it. 70, so, 70 dates a year. That's, that's yeah, a we lot just of did that this that's year. We just finished dates. up this year. That's done in, in, say, about six or seven trips, really. And we do about a dozen shows each time we go out. So wow. we can play all through the, the week. So we play all over North America. So. Everywhere. And wh- uh, how much are you playing these days, Ronnie? I, don't, I play very, very little because I, I can't hardly get around. I, I had a, a heart thing happen to me. And I, and I run out of air. I have a hard time breathing, you know. I'm, I think I'm getting better. Your but, tone sounds nice on this, this new music. Well, I, I was running out of air pretty good. Gordon was helping me there. There's a few notes that I'm a little weak on, but uh, uh, with the song, the Pony Man song, I have always loved that song, man. Mm-hmm. It's a hell of a story. Young, young people always want, everybody wants a pony. And it, it's actually one of our most popular songs. That, that we have in our show. We don't always do it either, but we, but it's... Oh, it, it was always a good one. Everything he does, I liked. What do you I think uh, people connect with in particular about about Pony Man? Well, it, it's, a, it's, a, a, it's a children's song. It, it is, it's a children's song. A bedtime so, story. It's a bedtime story. So, so Unbelievable. I mean, I, I wrote it for, for kids of my own way back down the road, and I have an extended family, believe me. And, yeah, uh, it, it was written it, for my own kids. I, it was just one of the great ones, along with all the other great. Our ones. kids Always play. Been. Our children played together. Ron, Ronnie and I. Our children played together. They they knew the song, but they heard the song forty years ago too. We're all, I'm telling you, our what, kids dude. are all getting where, middle-aged. Where were they? Where were they playing uh, together? Like when you visit Gordon, each other? Just, 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 Gordon. yeah. Gordon's first wife was from Sweden, I think, and her name was Brita. And my wife and Brita used to you know, run together a little bit. And Gordon and I, we used to run to a little bit. There's, there, there's a story that I really like to tell. We were two of the best behaved guys in town. In town. <laughs> but uh, I tell a story about uh, me and Gordon was out at a bar one time and the lady overserved us, you know, <laughs> they overserved us. They overserved. And, and, and you know when you're overserved, you think that every person in the world that you know wants to hear from you at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> And I called the Attorney General of Arkansas, who I knew, you know, because he's a, he's a, he picks a little himself. He loves folk music. And I campaigned for him when he became the president of the student body of the University of Arkansas. And, and he was one, one heck of a guy. Cowboy Ray Thornton, I gave him that name, you know. And he became the second biggest politician Arkansas has ever had, second only to Bill Clinton, Clinton yeah. you know. And so and we I, also know us personally, but. <laughs> By the way, Bill Clinton <laughs> and, also. And I knew that he, he'd just written that great song, In the Early Morning Rain, with a dollar in my hand. So I sang it on the phone. And he sang it on the phone at 3.30 in the morning to the Attorney General of Arkansas. <laughs> and, and we've been talking about it ever since. He tells that story everywhere he goes. I bet he didn't mind at all. He we tried mind. to get us to go down there for a show, remember? It, oh, I wanted to. I wanted yeah. to show up at a big show. I, I used to know a bunch of rich people in Arkansas. Most of them are dead now, but I was talking to them about bringing Gordon in with me, flying him in, <laughs> and hide him in the curtain somewhere, and we'll start playing for him, for Ray and them, Cowboy Ray, and I'll start off the song, and then Gordon will walk out and finish it. He'd flip, because he is a Gordon Lightfoot fan too. He loves that music. 
Uh, Everybody in Arkansas loves that kind of music. I That's saw a, cl a clip of Ronnie doing an interview with Paul Anka and Bill Clinton. <laughs> I did <laughs> on television. What, what's your relationship like with Bill Clinton? I have to wrap up after this, but well, I... Well, just, it's just that he was an Arkansas boy, and we were, we were a pretty hot little band, you know, locally, just young cats. And he used, he's a musician, one hell of a musician, too. He could have been he could have been big time. In fact, he had more scholarships offered in music than he did in, in business when he was getting ready to go to college. And he he loves the music and and he's good. He's really really good. And uh, he used to come in. He was a Ronnie fan like like the rest of us at that time. I tell you what, he the women went for him too. More than Gordon. Well, about the same for Gordon. He oh, hadn't geez. had quite as many hits as Gordon. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Unfortunately, I have to wrap up. What a pleasure having oh, you guys here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Okay, thanks a lot.